It's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So today's tip is about multiple organ failure in intensive care and if life support should be switched off if there's multiple organ failure. So I have an email or very quick email from a reader who says my partner is in intensive care with multiple organ failure. He's on life support and he needs his leg amputated they want to switch his machines off instead. What should I do? Well, you know, you haven't shared how old your partner is, but irrespective of that, you know, no life support in intensive care should ever switch off without patient or family consent, just because the intensive care team suggests that life support should be switched off doesn't mean you need to agree to it or your partner needs to agree to it, even though it sounds like your partner, partner may not be in a position that he can agree to it if he's in multiple organ failure and on life support. Now, when someone is in multiple organ failure in intensive care, you know, that could mean a number of things. I tell you most common scenarios in intensive care, what con is considered multiple organ failure. When someone is on a ventilator, you know, and is not breathing, um, that is considered life support. So the lungs would be failing. If someone is on inotropes or vasopressors or on vasodilators even, because their blood pressure is either too high or too low, um, that is considered life support. If someone is getting multiple blood transfusions, you know, for whatever reason, that is considered life support. Um, and it also means that if vasopressors are needed, blood transfusions are needed, you know, it means that the heart is often failing and that is another form of life support. Now, in intensive care, uh, sometimes the kidneys are failing and then hemofiltration or dialysis needs to be started so that the function of the kidney can be taken over. That is also considered life support and it's considered organ failure for, you know, for the kidneys. Um, also, the liver might be failing and then, you know, that could be considered uh, life support. You could also argue that if someone gets nutrition, enteral nutrition via an nasogastric tube or via a PEC tube or even, you know, via central line, via TPN, one could argue that's also considered life support and it's also considered um, organ failure. You know, someone can't swallow. Their digestive tract is not working, you know. And then lastly, if the brain is not working, that is could also be considered organ failure. So let's just say all organs are failing. Should someone, you know, be taken off life support? I strongly argue no, because that's what intensive care units are there for, um, to save lives and restore organ function. And, you know, once again, approximately 90% of intensive care patients survive you know, and that is in spite of multiple organ failure often, you know, it can take some time. But surely you as a family, you want to have some say uh, when and if life support should be withdrawn or not. Now, I know you have the challenge here that your partner most likely needs a leg amputation on top of everything that's going on. But, you know, the question is, you know, what do you want? What does your partner want? Does he want to live even if he needs his leg amputated, you know? I can't answer that question for you, but what you need to know is as long as there's life, there is hope and quality of life is just the perception. I should say future quality of life is just a perception. It's just that, you know, what is a good quality of life for someone um, or for you may not be what I'm thinking is a good quality of life and vice versa. So think about what is important for you, what is important for your partner, is the outlook of death a good one? Is the outlook of a lengthy recovery a good one? You know, with all the side effects that come from that, but that's probably a better option than dying and maybe let your partner get to a point where he can make his own decision. You know, I'm a big believer that people should make their own decisions and, and those decisions about life or death should not be triggered by intensive care teams, no matter how, uh, how bad the odds in theory, you know. So, 
you got to see how the next few days unfold. You know, are the organs recovering? Are they doing everything within their power to restore organ function? That's another very important question. You know, they may want to switch off life support and they may not have even offered you all therapy options as yet. You know, again, the biggest challenge for families in intensive care is that they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what to look for. They don't know what questions to ask. They don't know their rights and they don't know how to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And that's, I believe, what you are dealing with. You probably don't even know half of the things that are going on and you probably don't even know half of the options that are available uh, or half of the treatment options that are available for your loved one, for your partner, to get him out of intensive care alive. And that's why you should simply talk to us so we can give you a second opinion and we can shed some light on the situation so you're not bogged down by this doom and gloom situation. You know, have a look at a podcast that I've done a couple of weeks ago with one of our clients uh, where I interviewed an ICU survivor and at the time the client was basically doomed to die in ICU and he would have died if the family had given in and if they hadn't reached out to me and, you know, I was obviously inter intervening with the intensive care, was advocating, successfully advocating. And about 12 months later, this gentleman is sitting on a podcast sharing his story that, you know, him and his family are forever grateful that we could turn this situation around and making sure that he can live, you know, otherwise he would have just passed away. Uh, the title of the podcast is Thank You Intensive Care Hotline for Saving My Life. You are light and guidance to people. So check out this podcast just to verify everything that I'm saying that you should not give up here. It's way too early. If your partner cannot survive, despite all treatments, treatment options being offered and thrown at him, that's a different story. That would then be considered a real end of life situation, right? But if not all treatment, you know, if other treatment options are offered and you don't know about them yet, you know, that is then a perceived end of life situation. They are thinking he might be dying, but not all options have been offered or performed. So reach out to us. We can help you with this very quickly. Because if you have a loved one in intensive care, please contact us at intensivecarehotline.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or simply uh, send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, uh, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. There you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email. And uh, we answer all questions intensive care related. If you need a medical record review and a second opinion in real time, please contact us as well. We review medical records in intensive care in real time and we can give you a second opinion very fast. I also offer one-to-one -one consulting and advocacy with doctors and nurses directly, talking to them directly, talking to you, of course, you as the client. Um, we can also represent you in family meetings with intensive care teams and again, give you that second opinion and hold intensive care teams accountable. If you need a medical record review after intensive care, if you are suspecting medical negligence, uh, if you have unanswered questions, or if you are simply suspecting medical negligence, please contact us as well. Now, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, and comment below what you wanna see next or what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.